All right, to get started on the neutral safety switch replacement on this 2007 Honda Odyssey, we're going to have to get this fender liner out of the way, at least enough to be able to get access to what's behind this area right here. So to do that, you're gonna to have to go under the front bumper after it's jacked up. You'll have to remove, and you can see I've already kind of done some of this, but there is a, uh, a 10 millimeter bolt here, and then you're gonna have a couple plastic clips. And just in this area right here. There's, I only had one clip right here, and they just look like, they just look like this, where you have to kind of pry in from the side of the screwdriver to be able to pull it up, and then you just pull it out. I make tools for this uh, specifically, but I end up using a little screwdriver like this, or in some cases, a big one. But after you get the clips removed from down here, what you're gonna have to do is um, right here, there's a clip you'll have to pull out. Right here, there's a clip you'll have to pull out. And I also removed one up at the very top. And what that'll allow you to do is that'll let you pull it out to where you can tuck this behind the brake rotor and get you access to what we've already replaced. So on the previous Odysseys, whenever you take off the driver's side front wheel, the neutral safety switch would be somewhere in this area. But since this is a 2007, you have the good fortune of having to remove this liner. And then up in here, you can see that's where the, the switch is located on these. So this is not as much fun. All right, so after I got the two bolts off of the, so that bolt and that bolt off, I had to remove a nut that was holding this cable on. It looks like that with a little keeper and a little lock washer. And that looks like we have to remove this big guy right here. And it looks like it's got these little metal fingers that hold the nut in place. So I'm gonna have to kind of pry those down first before we can get a wrench on that to loosen that. All right, so the, uh, so it turns out all you have to do is loosen this nut right here. See how this is gonna be uh, just sort of loose. So all you're gonna do is basically tighten this on the shaft once it's there and then bend these fingers forward to, to keep this nut from spinning anymore. Um, otherwise, here's the old, old nut and little lock, lock, locky metal doohickey thingy. So I'm gonna slide this thing back up in there and reposition everything. All right, so let's see if we can do this. Excuse the old man noises. So what we're gonna do first, let's see if we can get the uh, shaft to sort of line up with that, which we could. And then what I'm gonna do is rotate it see all those bolt holes line up the way they're supposed to so now what I what we can do is we can tighten this to make sure that shaft isn't going to go anywhere and then we'll bend these metal fingers forward so to tighten this nut right here I am using a 7 8 inch and just a little open end and you don't have to tighten it a ton just enough to get it to where it's not going to be the shaft's not going to move anymore. Oop, I just switched it into gear. So don't do that. That was a uh, amateur hour. So if you happen to have accidentally messed up the location of this, just grab a little quarter inch wrench and you can pop it right back down to where it's supposed to be. And now it's in the position that we need it to be in. So we'll have to uh, reposition this stuff again. And what I'm likely going to do is put the bolts in here, top and bottom. That way we can um, get a good handle on putting this dealer jig back on. Got that bottom bolt threaded in just a little bit. I'm gonna got the top one up in here. It's always a good, uh, good idea to start these things by hand first so that you don't accidentally strip out the threads.
There we go. Now we're just going to snug these up. 10 millimeter socket. It's not going anywhere. Now we can get so this is gonna go on just like this. It's not quite lining up, so I am most likely gonna have to turn the shaft down a little bit, and then we can make sure everything's tight here before putting this on. So this is about the position you want it all to look like whenever you get it installed because you'll notice that this cable will just slip right on the end there. So now that I have this where I need it to be, I'm going to give this a final snug and bend these tabs. You can tell you'll get a certain amount of pressure on it and it's gonna to wanna to change gears on you. That is good enough to get that position in place, so all we have to do is bend the fingers back now. So to do that, I'm just going to use a little flathead screwdriver, and I'm going to just use the transmission as a leverage point to bend those fingers up, and for those top two, I will most likely need to use something like some needle nose pliers here. This is incredibly difficult one-handed, but you know, there we go. All right, so now the fingers are bent up. Give us a little final squeeze with these guys. And in hindsight, I think I would just forgo the use of the screwdriver altogether and go straight for the pliers the first time. All right, that's got it all squeezed up. Then we can put that guy on, followed by our lock washer first. So lock washer is going to go on, followed by this dealy jig right here. And that just goes on just like that. So it locks everything into place. Final, uh, uh, followed by the uh, little, little nut right here. And that is a 12 millimeter nut. It can be a booger to get started because of that catch. All right, that bolt can be a little bit of a booger to get started, or sorry, nut. But once you do, just slowly go at it and get that thing locked down. And then we can plug in the electrical connector and test it all out. Same deal as before. Now that we got that little nut tightened, the little keeper on here has a, uh, a little metal tab right there. We just want to squeeze that in place. Make sure that the, if the nut were to ever loosen, that that would keep it from moving anywhere. And it's a little thicker. Actually, it's a lot thicker than the, the one on the 7 8 inch. But, so you might not be able to bend it as much. It pretty much stays in place as you're removing it, but that's what it should look like whenever you're done. Um, so now, all we have left to do is pop in this electrical connector here. So it just slides in place, and I know I didn't show you how you get it loosened, but um, the way this works is the connector here, it just, pops over like that. So to get this thing off, you put a little flathead screwdriver up in there and just pry up on it and it pushes away. And then the plug just pulls out. That would have been useful to film. So there we go. 
that's all in place now. So now what I need to do is fire up the van and make sure that it goes into gear like it's supposed to and we don't have any more check engine codes. All right, so one final note on this is that you wanna go into the vehicle with it off, of course, and, and put it in neutral. And once it's in neutral, you can change how this guy is mounted in there and you wanna make sure that this line on the piece matches up to the arrow on the metal collar there. And that's when you'll know you have it adjusted correctly. And after that's adjusted correctly, just use your 10 millimeter and tighten up those, those bolts again. All right, with the car on, now you can test out the shifting. So it goes in reverse, neutral, drive, one or two, one, back up to drive, neutral, reverse, and park. Everything is working as it should. There aren't any violent jerks. If you get any violent jerks, that means that you uh, likely need to readjust the uh, sensor. So remember, just pop that thing down in neutral, make sure the uh, arrow lines up with the line, and then tighten those bolts back up and try it again. Thanks for watching.